Hello everybody, this is Conquering History Games and it is time for another Kaiserite Gaurid in Hearts of Iron 4. Today, by popular demand, according to my Patreons, we are going to be covering the Empire of Japan. So the Empire of Japan, when we uh, talk about it in terms of Kaiserreich, uh, wasn't really affected that much by how the First World War ended, although they did get guaranteed rule over the colonies. They... Basically, there was this period of economic instability in the 1920s, and eventually Hirohito was actually, there was an attempted assassination before he was emperor. And uh, now he is emperor, but there have just been a succession of several failed governments that have been ruling Japan. And because of that, you start with a national spirit that is called um, fading democracy, which I'll talk about. There is a way to get rid of it. So you can see right there, it is not uh, something that inherently has a bad political effect. It's just explaining your situation. For example, if you went over here to the United States where you have the um, political crisis, national spirit that doesn't actually do anything bad. It's just letting you know that you are in a crisis. Let's also go ahead and turn that music off. So uh, you are, I, I love Japan. Japan is great. Japan is one of my favorite countries in um Kaiser Reich. Uh, in fact, I have considered at times doing a double Japan playthrough on the channel, even though it's not done yet, because it's even un slightly unfinished tree is still one of the best in the game. I think that it could be a very dominating uh, late game power. It is right up there with Russia or Austria, uh, just for being that country that could be a wild card and choose a side and um, really turn the tide of a war. And it's a very complicated country, so uh, I expect that this guide is going to be rather long, and uh, there is a lot to go over. So I'm going to try to go over as much as I can as far as day one things that need to be known as I um, possibly can. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is let's take a look at your national spirits. Okay, you have a divided army, so this is lowering your max planning by 25%. Actually, you can also see that right here in your division overview. And you also have the Kiyoki Railways, which are increasing your infrastructure uh, construction speed, but lowering your factory output. Uh, there is a, a way to convert them into something better. Uh, that's because these are British, and basically you're using British railways, which are not really good and you want something better. I mean, they're good for some things, bad for others, but in the early game when you're just building infrastructure, this could be pretty good. Uh, now, moving on to your army, you have 52 divisions, uh, half of which, uh, roughly half of which are infantry with a support artillery battalion as well as 22 garrison units, so those aren't very good for much, and six cavalry divisions. Your navy is absolutely enormous. I believe it is 175 uh, fleet. Yeah, yeah, 175 total ships uh, divided into seven carriers, 11 battleships, six battle cruisers, 20 heavy cruisers, 19 light cruisers, 80 destroyers, and 32 U-boats. So you could, of course, merge those, separate those to your heart's content. But you have, yeah, just an absolutely huge navy, and it is definitely one of your strengths. You have 415 airplanes at your disposal, uh, mostly fighters, naval bombers, and tactical bombers. A lot of these planes are on your carriers, but you still have uh, quite a few available to you. And your Air Force is definitely another one of your strengths, if not your greatest strength, as Japan. Uh, because, as we're going to see when we look at the national focuses, there are some fantastic bonuses that you can get over here. Uh, not to mention technologically you begin with almost every single 1936 model plane and except for the strategic bomber and uh, you're also missing the carrier fighter so maybe you want to upgrade that uh, if that's something you've been working on uh, four research slots which is always great you gotta love that kind of stuff and i already showed you you have tons of planes you're also navy is very strong most of the 1936 models have already been researched as well. You don't have a preemptive land doctrine. You do have the 1934 light tank, though. You have several, you know, you have the, these three great uh, support companies here. Infantry Type 1, Mountaineers, Marines, and uh, also Electronic Engineering. The first one is research. And I always love when that is because this takes so long to do. Uh, so it's awesome that you could just jump right into that if you wanted to. All right, now we're going to, oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little scatterbrained, but a busy day. Uh, so factories, 
27 factories, most of them are, are, not most of them, but a lot of them are being taken up by your consumer good factories, uh, partly because of your civilian economy, partly because of your ministers. Uh, you also have 15 military factories, so that's pretty great, but you do not have much in the way of resources. You can see you actually have zero rubber, so let's say uh, you wanted to just have some military factories and then you wanted to spread out the rest, I don't know, getting carrier fighters or something, but as you can see, you start to run out of resources pretty quick as soon as you want to uh, build some planes. In that same way, though you have 12 factories, if you wanted to, say, build a carrier, you very quickly are running out of resources, even steel. So a lack of resources is something that severely hinders you as Japan. So you could trade for it, but since you do not have, wait, where is it? You do not have that many to trade with, and as, you, as we will also see, you are going to suffer from political instability. Uh, that's not always an option, so you're going to be really limited in the things that you can build. So while that you start relatively strong, particularly in the air and at sea, uh, you're kind of stuck in that position for a long time until you can fix it. So... Uh, next up, we've got our national focus tree. So the national focus tree is broadly divided into several sections. You have your political focus tree here, although this also turns into an industrial focus tree eventually uh, down here. Uh, but that's that's kind of mid to late game that you get there. You have your land doctrine tree under military direction. I'll talk about that in detail. You have your air and sea tree. Uh, tree. I'll talk about that in a minute. And you have your foreign policy tree. Now, this is the one that is not complete yet, but you could have a perfectly fine game right now in 0.5.2. Uh, and, and Japan is a fun country to play. Is there's there's lots of different ways to do it. So let's first talk about the armies. And we're also I'm going to sort of play this out normally. There's probably going to be cuts whenever I get to a point where there is a. Uh, decision to be made because I'm just making a save file so I can refer to it and point us in other directions uh, but besides that because there is so much that's going on in Japan I'm gonna more or less play this out like it is normally uh, keep in mind though I am going to go over the political stuff last and initially I am going to show you guys how to just I'm gonna play this like I'm going for the show of restoration because this is the path that I get asked about so much, so I want people to really understand this. And then towards the end of the video, I'll explain how you can create electorate reform and military centralism. Okay? Sounds good. Let's go. So, military direction, we're just going to start there and let it play out. So, the early part of your game, certainly 1936, but probably into 1937, as Japan, not a whole lot is going on. Uh, you've got... You're going to be suffering from a lot of political penalties, particularly if you continuously take focuses, so you want to watch out for that. Uh, there are probably going to be some rebellions that are going on. As, as you see, you are recovering from the lost decade. Uh, so basically, this event just explains the problems that you're going through. I mean, your industry is getting on track, but there's still a lot of rural property. Uh, wages are falling, demographic change, etc, etc. It's explaining how this is still a beta of an alpha. So the this Japan is not a completed country yet, but I really got to say, I, I can't say this enough. Uh, for a country that's not complete, it definitely is one of the best in the game as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you're going to get this event about Mantetsu and its record profits. If you're somebody who's played Fingtian before, you're familiar with Mantetsu. They are represented basically by the Concordia Association. Uh, so if, as you see Fingtian go more yellow, that means they're being more influenced by you and things like that. And actually, that's something else I should talk about. So your sphere of influence. You do not have a faction at the start of the game. There's really only the big three. But you do have... Um, subjects you have the Fingtian government here which is basically your representative you you seized north japan seized northeast china in the 1930s i think it was uh and Fingtian is essentially think of it as the equivalent of uh manchuria and vanilla uh or manchuko i should say where you are going to through Fingtian take over china although you have to watch out because they might try to break away from you so anyway, Fingtian is your part of China, much like the AOG is Germany's part of China. And you want them to succeed, to a point. Uh, then over here you have Transamer. So Transamer is run by Kolchak, who uh, basically wants to rule the entire Russian Republic, and he may or may not be assassinated. We'll talk about that when it pops up. And, and again, these are introductory guides. I'm not going to go over every single event in the entire game uh, uh, that Japan can go through because it would just be too long and too complicated but I'm giving you general ideas of how a Japan game sort of plays out 
Anyway, so you might have noticed here that I'm uh, drawing a border next to Korea. That's because Korea will typically rebel, so you're going to want to watch out for that. So the Diet has uh, dissolved. There is going to be an election on February 20th. While we're waiting, these are your commanders. You got a lot of good ones. You got a couple good field marshals that already have offensive doctrines and lots of good ones. Uh, whoops. A lot of good one, uh, generals that have various traits, mostly tricksters, but there's other things like fort busters and commandos and things like that. So, we finished up the military direction. And I do highly encourage you, whenever you're playing as Japan, to read through the events. A lot of them, you don't really have a decision to make at the end of it. It's just kind of telling the story of what's happening internally in the country. But I personally think it's so great. The fighting between the different political parties and the ministers and how the elections play out. It's all fantastic stuff. I really love it. I encourage you to read it. Now, uh, the army leadership. You have two generals approach you. Basically, Nagata thinks that... Um, because you know, they're thinking about the future, they're thinking about who you're going to be going to war with. Nagata says that we have to centralize the command structure and expand our mobilization capability. So wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 that's this one. This is right here. He is the superior firepower guy. So he thinks we need to be working on superior firepower. General Obata says that uh, you have to you know, be quick. You have to use short, rapid, and decisive operations to avoid a long war. So he is in favor of mobile warfare, moving quickly, grabbing victory points, cutting off supply lines to your enemy, whereas Nagata thinks that you just need to like make better equipment than them and destroy them in that way. And they both think that it would be a good idea to uh, have a central chain of command. This is key here. Uh, because those some of you may have seen when I did a live stream before as Japan, I was acting very silly and deliberately was taking um, what I thought was the dumbest option because it talks about it here. Raw manpower tactics are a poor strategy. We can never hope to compete with Russian or Chinese manpower. We may now choose how to proceed. So that would be total war readiness. So it's saying you'll choose wisely. You then can choose any of these four. And obviously each is corresponding to a certain doctrine. The... Uh, strengthening of the command hierarchy is very dangerous because as it says, if we lack the political strength to get them to work together, this may backfire dangerously. So essentially, if you do not have positive political power and you're taking strength in the command hierarchy, because you are supporting both generals who, who offered you different plans, they're going to start bickering with one another and your army is going to suffer from it. You're going to get uh, negative effects like worse planning speed and stuff like that. But worse, you're going to lose political power. So you're going to be in negative political power, and then you get negative political power events, and it just becomes this hole that you can never dig yourself out of. But if you if you can pull that off, uh, you get some interesting things here. You can either go with planning speed or recovery rate, and then you get a uh, bonus to your max planning. So if you uh, were going with the grand battle plan doctrine, and you wanted to go down assault where you get 20% more here, and then where is it? Another 10% here, then you can get another 10% on top of that once you finish reorganizing the staff. Also, keep in mind that uh, as of now, as of 0 0.5.2, um, all of your land doctrine and naval and air doctrine trees take uh, 35 days. So they take half as long as regular focuses. So you can knock out quite a few of them before you get to June of 1936, which is when the National Security Act focus will open up for you. And remember, you also can't take the rising sun until after 1930, uh, until it's already 1937. Anyway, moving back to this. Total War Readiness is all about the mass assault doctrine and almost all of these focuses just increase your recruitable population. And it could get absurdly high. You can get into the tens of millions. Because Human Tsunami gives you 1.5, you get another 2% here, and then you get another 3% um, here. There are certain requirements here, though. For example, to take the Emperor's Call, you have to at least be on service by requirement with your conscription law. So you see how you have to get progressively, you have to take progressively more uh, political power to go higher. Uh, once you get to service by requirement, when you start to get the really bad negative effects because of how much of your population you're uh, conscripting, uh, that is when you are allowed to take the Emperor's Call. Keep in mind, if for some reason you find yourself having lots and lots of political power, you can switch to service by requirement, go to your focus tree, take the Emperor's Call, get the 2% more recruitable population, come back to your laws and governments tree, and then switch back to extensive conscription, and your uh, recruitable population will not go away. That is current as of 0 0.5. Uh, 
Then, finally, if you want to get the uh, apologies, uh, Koyumi Gyu Sentai, or whatever it is, the Patriotic Citizens Fighting Corps will mass mobilize them. So this has stricter requirements. The first one is that you have to be on at least all adult adults serve. So that's where you get some seriously bad penalties. But also, you have to have taken either military centralism or the show of restoration. So here or here. If you have gone with electorate reform uh, down the defend democracy tree, this will be cut off to you. Uh, and then you get one research bonus for infantry technology here. This is a really bad tree, unless you know what you're doing. But it's not good. It's not good. Now, you can get into a situation, in fact, in that live stream I did, where you have more manpower than Russia. You can absolutely do that. But you're going to be bleeding a lot, and it might not be the best use of your resources. Superior firepower is just pretty standard stuff. It just gives you access here to army reorganization at the end, which will increase your organization, obviously. You can get envelopment tactics, which increases your speed, but that's also available through mobile warfare. Now, mobile warfare is interesting because you have the Chi projects here, which can reduce by 100% one of your ahead-of-time research bonuses. This used to specifically just be medium tanks. But now you have more options because of this. Let's take a look at the tank tree. So because you already start with light tank one, if you wanted in 1936, you can grab the uh, 1936 model light tank really quickly. And uh, in just three focuses, so in the time it would normally take you to do two focuses, in fact, let's start heading down there just so I can demonstrate how quickly you can do this. Um, you could, whoops. All right, this is a mission from Norway. It's not a big deal. It's like, do you want to pay political power for convoys or not? That's all it is. So let's go ahead and research that. In fact, let's research the heavy tanks as well, just for uh, demonstrating purposes. But you can get really advanced technology pretty fast, and we're going to keep going down this way, and I'll explain more about it later. So while that's going on, let's now, uh, look, oh yeah, and this also will eventually lead to overwhelming firepower, which gives you more division attack. You'd think with a name like that, that would be over here, but it's not a big deal. Okay, now military expansion. This is the other thing that you can take early on in your, um, actually, let, let's do this general election first. <laughs> All right, so the general election in 1936, basically you have to just decide if you want the social conservatives to keep their majority or lose it. They have an absolute majority right now, even though it's a parliamentary system where there's a multi-party system, they have it all by themselves, so they don't have to have a coalition with anybody, which is kind of a strong position, a pretty damn strong position to be in, in a multi-party system. So do you want them to keep it or not? Since I said we are first going to look at the Shoah restoration, we, you have to have them lose their absolute majority, and you will lose also 50 political power. Okay, now moving back over here to military expansion. The military expansion gives you political power real quick, which is nice. See, there's that stability I was talking about. These are assassinations and stuff. You could either choose to reform your navy or reform your air force. And, I, and I'm going down the military branch just to explain to you how these work. Uh, you could easily do this too. It's all very strong stuff. For example, whoops, okay, for example, let's say you want to work on your Air Force. You want a really great Air Force. You can take military expansion, Air Force reform, fighter focus, and Japanese fighters in the time it would take you to get down here to the Chi pro uh, projects. The jet fighter focus is great because it gives you two 50% research bonuses for your fighter and heavy fighter models. As I've already shown you, you already have all the 1936 models. So basically, if you wanted to focus on just regular fighters, you can get um, you can get the 44, the 40 and 44 model very, very quickly if you so chose. Or you can decide to get just more advanced regular fighters and more advanced heavy fighters. Heavy fighters could be a good idea. I like to use heavy fighters a lot in Asia because they cover big distances and there's a lot of countries in Asia that don't really have air forces. So agility is not as big a factor. But you might not just be fighting you know, the Mongolians, you might be fighting some serious players. Okay, working on the Chi projects now. Uh, so it is up to you. Now, speaking of agility, as I was saying, in the time that right now you could be working on Chi projects, you could instead have been working on Japanese fighters, which gives you a national spirit plus 10% agility, which is amazing because everybody knows that agility is basically the most important factor when it comes to how your uh, fighters work because they increase it increases the chance of you hitting planes and also increases the chance of you avoiding other planes so that would be engine normally um so like as you can see here 
this is giving plus two five percent here out of the baseline of 50 agility so right there it takes 55 air experience points to put an engine on here that is going to increase its ability by 10 percent uh its agility by 10 percent and you can stack it obviously but you could definitely have access to some of the best fighters in the world through that you also can take samurai of the skies down here which increases your air attack by 10 percent which is not as good but it's uh, you know it is interesting in its own way Okay, so as you see, it's already May 1936, and I've got good stuff. Now, you could then take, you, you take four, know how I keep bringing up four. You could take these four, and then maybe you can get one more. It'll only take 35 days, but we're just going to wait. We're going to let the national focus points accue for a little bit and wait for the 1st of June. Meanwhile, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, we're going to wait for the 1st of June here. So we can do the National Security Act as soon as possible. Although, if you're doing the show of restoration, there's not really a rush Okay, it's now June. I know I went a little bit over. I went like a day over. You can now do the uh, National Security Act. You're going to get this pop-up about the restorationists and centralists. Keep an eye on Siam, too. Siam could become your friend later, and I'll talk about that later. All right. Now, um, over here on the Navy side, again, really good stuff. You can get better Marines, better transportation models, which could be good if you want to do some island hopping. But you get yourself six more naval dockyards. So considering that you start with 12, that's basically a 50% boost to your naval dockyards. Uh, really good stuff. Also, there's nothing exclusive here. You get all sorts of bonuses. I mean, the Okami project also will give you a research bonus for super heavy battleship models. So if you're into that kind of thing, it's definitely there. And then down here, you have your carriers and naval doctrines. Now, interestingly, at the end, you can choose to go with rocket science, which will give you two 50% research bonuses for your rocketry and jet technology. So you could be doing some really cool stuff there. Um, where is it? Yeah, so you can get these pretty quickly, and eventually, you know, be, after you use your 50% research bonuses here, you can get jets really fast. So, you know, again, Japan is great in the late game. Japan is very much like a tsunami, or really more like an avalanche. It just snowballs and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and badder as the game goes on. Speaking of research, so the Chi projects are in effect. Now, in 1936, you are 76 days away from medium tanks. Or 76 days away from light tank 41 model or 95 days away from heavy tank 2 uh, and anybody who has watched me play and watched me mess around with tanks you guys know how much I love heavy tanks so it's a it's a very very powerful um, bonus you could alternatively just not take it until later and then maybe research medium tank 2 and then jump to the 41 model of medium tanks if you wanted using that uh, re ahead of time penalty reduction so it's a very it's very good um, what was it? Oh yeah, we're gonna let that. We're gonna let the clock keep going. Funnily enough, you have Project Hiroshima, which could give you two 50% research bonuses for nuclear technology. Um, you have to have already completed though the National R&D Institute, which is wait a minute. I hope I'm not blanking out. It's somewhere over here. Goodness gracious, have I completely blanked out? All right, so that's not the point. Let's go ahead and although that is bothering me. National R&D Institute. Where is that? I thought it was over here. For sure. Very strange. Okay, anyway, the point here is uh, let's talk about the foreign policy tree. So the foreign policy tree, they say it's buggy. I've been playing, I played Japan a lot on my own time, even though I don't have a series on the channel yet. I haven't personally had a problem with it, but I guess the AI does because the co-prosperity spear could be a real bitch to deal with sometimes. <laughs> Okay, five, four, three, two, one, mark. But let's talk about the NSA Act. So the National Security Act, you can read through this on your own time. If you want the Showa restoration to happen, you need to make sure that public op opinion and opposition defeat the act. So again, you're taking a political power hit. You're at minus 400 now, the way that I've been playing this. Um, let's just do that or something. Okay, so foreign policy tree. You get the rising sun. You have to be at peace for this to work. I really want to emphasize that. You have to be at peace for this to work as well as it being after uh, 1936. So that's a problem because Korea is going to pro is going to uprise at some point. So you probably don't want to actually take this until after that is over because you don't want to be halfway through it and then it cancels. Now once you're done with that, you can found the co-prosperity sphere, which will of course have uh, 
Fingtian and Transamur in it, but you could potentially have other people in it. You could have the Kingdom of Siam join it eventually, perhaps the Philippines. Allegedly, you can get Indonesia to do it. I've never seen them do it, and I'll talk about that later. You can get California to join the co-prosperity sphere, and uh, I just think once the co-prosperity sphere has been worked on a little bit more in future patches, uh, Japan is going to be able to have a pretty fun faction to mess around is going is to have a great system to mess around with. All right, now note, you cannot take, once you've completed the National Security Act, you cannot take either of these yet. Uh, that won't be until December. So in the meantime, oh, I don't know, let's go get some naval dockyards or something. So after you create the co-prosperity sphere, you can uh, create the um, basically your version of the scientific council so you guys can share each other's technologies. Well, 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 we have the second um, Russian civil war happening. How very interesting. With Wrangel in charge, it's usually Kornilov that uh, sets it off these days, but that's great. So now Transmer is in a fantastic position. And maybe we're going to see them, uh, you see, we got turmoil in Siberia. And uh, maybe they might take the Russia is vulnerable here. No, they're just drawing closer to Fingtian, unfortunately. All right, the government's over fire. Things are getting crazy. All right, getting back to this. This is like a pseudo let's play. Getting back to this, so after you have done the Rising Sun, you have the option to bring down the German Goliath. This actually does not send you to war with them right away, you're just increasing world tension. You then can pot potentially get the Kingdom of Siam uh, to uh, form an alliance with you, or the Federation, or whoever the hell it is. And what you basically tell them, not that you have to hold yourself to it, is that, look, you deserve more land. I deserve more land. We both don't like the Germans. So we will give you the Malaya Peninsula, and you can have Indochina, if when the time comes to go to war with Germany, you attack them there. And that's not nothing. Uh, that could be very helpful. Fall of Petrograd already. That was fast. I've never seen the Soviet Russia win the Civil War on its own. All right. We've got time for one more focus, I think. So that's what that is. You can then claim the colonies, which will give you claims on basically all the little islands that are in the South Pacific. So all of this stuff out here, you know, freaking. Wait a minute. Okay, yeah. So you, you you get a new you have a new election. It makes you think that things are happy that's going on. But here, like yeah, Kroonstein, Kroonstern Einslen and Marshall Einslen and Karolinen and all this shit. All of that you get claims on. Because you see that you, it's a defensive thing. Like, you have to claim them because if not, other people will uh, attack you through them. And there you have it. Japan's longest, longest winter has happened. You can now choose which path Japan will take. Uh, it's going to take a few more days here. But let me just finish talking about that. So you can claim the colonies. Uh, note this only takes 14 days. And you can then issue a colonial ultimatum. So the colonial ultimatum is kind of like how the... Uh, how Russia has in its foreign policy tree this um, Germany is busy demand concessions one that only takes seven days the demanding of the colonies only takes two weeks and it's when Germany is war so you're probably gonna want to wait until they're at war with the third international so you can't join the third international's faction but they're sort of your allies and the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of way so once they're at war with Germany you tell Germany I want your colonies and then Germany's gonna tell you no Allegedly, they can say yes, it doesn't happen. They're going to tell you no, and now you go to war with them, and you can start picking off China and stuff like that. So that's what that is, and it only takes two weeks, so you might want to be ready beforehand. Uh, but it also means the Germans don't have time, particularly even if it's multiplayer, they don't have time to react to you once they see that you're focusing on it. All right, let's uh, choose the future of Japan here. It's December 20th, finish up that focus. Great. And now, as you can see, uh, defending democracy is blocked off for you. So we go with the longest day. And that's how you do that. All right. Continuing on this policy tree, you can have the Great Railway Incident and then either puppeting or going to war with Qing. This is just like in the vanilla game how Japan can have ways to go to war with China, except instead of all of China, you're just specifically going to war with the Qing. Now, you can initiate the war, but you also want to keep an eye on the Fingtian government because if they begin to go down this center focus tree and then do the Grand Marshal's proclamation, they can also go to war with Fingtian. Uh, now, 
to be fair, I have not ever seen the AI actually go down this path, so Japan ends up having to attack it. On the other hand, maybe I've not been paying attention enough. But Qing is somebody who you're going to want to deal with occasionally, make an alliance with a Shang Qing here. Uh, but, you know, between you and Fing Tian and possibly Transimer, you should be able to deal with them kind of easily. Speaking of Transimer, there we go. We have Japan's longest day because we finished uh, that focus. But Transimer has now overthrown Admiral Kolchak. You could choose to institute uh, a new leader to the government. I'm not going to talk about what these different people do. That'll be more for a Transmer guide one day. Um, or you can just congratulate them on the new government. Well, let's try to let's try to install our own general. See if they're going to be mad about that. No, they aren't. See, they do it. They don't whine about it. Uh, Korean nationalism is growing. Okay, so right now you are technically a paternal autocratic country. You have not actually done the show of restoration yet. So let's get to work on that. Okay. Uh, rise of Korean nationalism. This is something where you can pressure Transmer and tell them to stop, um, you know, letting Korean nationalism exist. Let's push them for a crackdown. Now, there are times where they get mad about it. And here we go. Transmer has refused our demands. This is what I was planning on happening. Uh, you could just lose political power. You could say you're just going to do it yourselves, or you could say, how dare they send in the troops, and then that will put them to war with Transmer, uh, and they can potentially uh, pull in Fing Tian. Let's take a look and see what happens. Okay, so we are going to say, how dare they send in the troops. And it says Jap they're getting an event now, Japanese mark on Vladivostok. Transmer will then break away. We you can let them go at the cost of 200 political power. Look where your political power already is, so we're not going to let that happen. So you will instead choose to destroy them and declare war on Transmer. Now, after this happens... Oh, yeah. Okay, great. This is uh, actually not the example I wanted to talk about, but it's cool that uh, they show this because um, it's a rare event and you should know what to do. So... Transmir, at the prospect of me going to war, has decided to give themselves up back to Russia. It's pretty rare that this happens. Usually, they will attempt to form an alliance with the Fingtian government, so you have to watch out for that. Um, but you could choose to go to war with Russia over this or decide it's too risky and you'll lose still 60 political power. So that's what you need to know about how Transmir works. All right, now, how far along are we with the show of restoration? We're pretty close here. Now, as long as I've got you here, uh, let's talk about Qing. So when it comes to Qing, you typically are going to want to invade Qing as quickly as possible. The sooner the better because they're only going to get stronger and continue to build more divisions. Also, they could potentially join Middle Europa. There's an event where uh, Germany will give them the AOG if they choose to you know, help them uh, to join Middle Europa. So uh, here you have the counter coup. So it's cooing the coup basically uh, and you switch from being paternal autocrats to being national populace once again with that 50 percent 50 percent on the nose exactly in this case and so once you've done that you then get the choice between three different factions but that does not actually happen right away so we're going to wait for that okay here we go yes the new system movement is happening read that if you want you could also seize guam from the united states i'm sure you knew that if you don't it hurts so just do it all right, any minute now, we should be getting the first convention. Yeah, here we go. The first convention of the Taishi Yokosankai. Read through this on your own, but basically it explains to you these three different factions and how they work. So you want to spend some time, I'm not going to go through all of it, but figuring out which one of these factions you like and who you want to... Uh, you know, basically run Japan. So uh, there's pros and cons to each of them. For example, the Kakushina faction, uh, you can get better planning speed, but at the cost of political power, same thing down here, you get better infrastructure construction speed, but at the cost of political power. Uh, this also has consequences when you go down here towards your industrial tree, which actually I'm just going to go over right now before uh, I finish the video with uh, more talk about the foreign policy tree and then... Um, the democracy and military centralism stuff so let's say you wanted to go with this faction all right 
All of these factions eventually lead to you getting your fifth research slot down here. You also can get uh, the Kyoki Railways thing, which is basically where you're going to switch out uh, these railways for new ones. After you've done this, you have three different options in what kind of uh, what your economic laws are going to be, but they do have different. Um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they have different requirements. So, uh, for example, you can only take supporting the Z uh, Zaibatsu if you went with the Yokoshia faction. The nationalist policy can be done if you have done anything but this faction. And the bureaucratic economy can basically be taken by everybody. And they all have different effects. You can read through them on your own, decide what you do want, what you don't want. Some of these are pretty interesting. Um, now, let's go back to talking about foreign policy. So we already went over how this leads to the war with Qing. This is how you get your alliance with Siam. And then this is where you can eventually go to war with Germany if they're already at war themselves, most likely with the Third International. Now over here, you uh, can choose if you want to go north or south uh, with the Naishin Ron leading you to demanding India, potentially annexing or getting an alliance with Hawaii. Same thing with the Philippines. So this the foreign policy tree is a little bit buggy right now, but the main thing is you have a decision about you want you can make demands on Indonesia, for example, with, uh, right here. Only takes 14 days. Uh, and, and read through these requirements. So for example, here you have to be at peace with the Netherlands and the German Empire, stuff like that. So the in Indonesia is sometimes held onto by the Netherlands. Oftentimes it goes independent. In any case, I have never seen nor have I heard of Indonesia giving itself to you willingly. Even if Indonesia is independent and has zero divisions and did not join Middle Europa. And that is something to keep in mind that the Philippines and Indonesia will often join Middle Europa for protection. But I literally have seen a zero divisions Indonesia that is in no faction refuse the demands to become a part of the Japanese Empire. Maybe it's because the AI considers the move to be something of a suicide where you get the game over screen. I don't know. I'm not a computer. Uh, but when you get when it comes time to demand Indonesia, be prepared to fight for it. Uh, same thing with the alliance with the Philippines or bringing them into the fold. And Hawaii, you have to be ready to fight anybody whose faction they're in. Now, keep in mind, when you make the demand for Hawaii, oftentimes, if the Pacific States of America chooses to defend them, they will absorb Hawaii into themselves, so you can end up going to war with them over that. Now, if the PSA is in your faction, that's another story. Okay, now moving over to the uh, the northern route here, Hokushinron. So... Of course, these both give you political power to, uh, for for completing them at all. Wait, I thought this one did. Well, I guess I was wrong about that. Anyway, so you can get some political power here. And then you have Operation Kamikaze and Operation Kuma, both of which also take just two weeks. Operation Kuma, I think you can figure out what it does because it says you must not puppet or be in a faction with the Russian state. It also talks about Russia in here. So here's the thing. Unlike many other war goal focuses that you can take in uh, Kaiser Reich, this is going to send you immediately into war with Russia, as we will see here in just a moment. Operation Kuma, our troops are decisively positioned. Declare war. So you don't get an option. It happens immediately. So don't take this until you're ready to go with Russia. And then Kamikaze is how you fight the Mongolians. Now, if you decide to attack the Mongolians, you could potentially create an alliance with Russia. I wouldn't hold your breath about doing it, but it is an extremely powerful alliance if you do manage to create it. But uh, it's not as bad as when you try to form India peacefully, but it is still very lengthy odds. So we're almost done here. I now am going to go back in time and show you all how to go down the defend democracy route. Here we are back at the National Security Act. We are going to force this act through this time, even though it again costs us political power. And as I've said before, I'll say it again, you will have negative political power for quite some time. Now there could be an argument be made that maybe you could just not take any sort of national focuses so that you could accumulate political power. But that's totally up to you. So while we wait for December to arrive, let's talk about uh, the differences between electoral reform and military centralism. Now, you can do whatever you want. 
But quite frankly, I think that military centralism is the worst route to go down. The pros do not nearly outweigh the cons. You do get things like more political power right here, for example. But you've been paying so much to go down this tree, it can sometimes take quite a while to get out of it. Uh, over here though you might notice you also have that military training curriculum so you know you could get military training curriculum and stack uh, the human tsunami emperor's call and uh, co the uh, what's it called patriotic citizens fighting corps and you can get some seriously high recruitable population as Japan but I just don't think it's worth it because if you're doing this sort of stuff you're probably not developing your industry as much as you should and hey maybe that's why you need so many men because you don't have guns so they have to attack with their fists uh, now the defending democracy route is of course not as aggressive as the other routes uh, it's harder to go to war you still can eventually though and remember that these it doesn't matter what the world tension is like this does not stop you from taking these focuses that allow you to go to war with your neighbors uh, and what the democracy route is good for is just raw research power uh, we, you, right here you get uh, academic pluralism which they actually recently nerfed because it used to be, if I'm remembering correctly, it used to be you'd get a 10% reduction in your research time, which is obscene. I mean, it was crazy. But still, 5% is pretty good. You get political power boosts here, just like you do with the National Total uh, Mobilization Ordinance. Also, keep in mind the length of these days. They are 35-day focuses. Once again, lots and lots of 35-day focuses when you're playing as Japan. Um, and then going down this way, so you can get this academic pluralism, and it, it gives you access to the supporting of the Zaibatsu, which could lead to funded R&D, which gives you another 5% resource uh, research time reduction. And I know I haven't talked about these. I'm going to get to it after the political stuff. Actually, there's no need to like go over it in detail or anything like that. So the colonial incentives uh, is going to reduce your factory output and then you can basically choose to immigrate to other areas of your empire uh, and eventually you can core them. As for the Land Reform Act, this has to do with a drought. Uh, basically the poor rural farmers begin to struggle even more and uh, you cannot get rid of that until you have finished the uh, land reform act uh, so you're going to be suffering political power penalties as a result of that and then the uh, land adjustment act just gives you some more bonuses and things like that you know just just read through it on your own time i'm not going to go over everything here but we're almost ready to go a couple more days here okay Defending democracy, but that's not it. So, so defending democracy just gets you on this branch. After that, there is still another event, and I'll cut back when we get to it. Now, after you have completed the defending of democracy, you get this event, the Emperor and Democracy, and uh, he can say that he supports the government. You can then agree with him to get political power, or you can say he is out of line and take minus 250 political power, and there you have it. Right there is military centralism. Obviously, you do not take that if uh you know you want to go down electorate reform so that's pretty much all there is to it and then we're just getting some pop-ups again because i uh i went back in time so i hope that this was very helpful to you i know that the japanese focus tree is still technically a beta of an alpha but it is still one of my favorite countries to play in Kaiserreich, and I don't anticipate any radical new changes. They just need to fix the foreign policy tree, so I, this should be able to stand up to few further patches and not be rendered obsolete too quickly. Strengths and weaknesses, I already talked about how you can make a very powerful army and navy. Uh, your, your army, I mean, did I say army and navy? Air force and navy. Your army is going to be the redheaded stepchild of your three military branches, but even that you can make strong depending on which military direction you go to. But hey, you could just decide to go, you know, just, just, just go total war readiness and uh, military centralism and just bury your enemies in your corpses. Whatever you want to do. You could do superior firepower and electorate reform. You can mix and match. There's all sorts of fun to be had. 
Um, so the weaknesses of Japan is it is a little bit of a slow start. You basically just spend your first two years or so recovering. Um, I mean, especially if you choose to be trading for goods for your military equipment. Uh, I really think there is a strong case to be made for just not trading for any resources at all so that you could build up your factories and infrastructure and stuff and really get your economy rolling. Uh, but you're not going to be able to make very much stuff for your military and you'll have to exist on what you have for a little while. And that could become problematic if you find yourself in an early war with Russia. But on the other hand, you will get to go to war with Russia on your own terms, more or less. Unless they become the Soviet Union. In which case, uh, put your head between your knees and kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> no, you, you'll be fine. You can figure it out. You're a good player. I know you are. Uh, so, subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to click that bell so you're always notified whenever a new uh, video comes up or I'm live streaming. And remember, if you go to patreon.com slash conqueringhistory, a link of which is in the description, and become a Patreon, you get to vote on what the next country I cover in these Kaiser rights will be. <laughs> in these Kaiser Reich guides will be. Whew, what is going on with my voice today? Anyway, you all have a wonderful day.